Welcome to Frank Fridays. I would like to introduce my Frank Friday collaborator, Ellie Hayworth, who is the founder of Hayworth Consultancy. Hayworth is committed to promoting intrepid ideas in art and design, and Ellie has grown her business to command the full scope of client services, including, but not limited to, public relations, content development, business strategy, strategic partnerships, events, speaking engagements, you name it, Ellie and Hayworth can help you. Today, we are talking with Kathleen Lynch, who is the project manager for Art Production Fund. Kathleen joined Art Production Fund in 2012. In her time at APF, Kathleen has developed an expertise in assisting artists in production from early planning stages to the realization of public artworks. Previously, Kathleen worked for Gallery Jocelyn Wolf in Paris, and Kathleen currently guest lectures at Parsons, FIT, the Maryland Institute College of Art, among many other things. We're really excited to sit and chat with Kathleen today. And Ellie, I'll let you get us started. Thank you, I appreciate it, Carlina. And Kathleen, I'm really excited to be chatting with you today, so it's great to have you. Yeah, thank you both so much. I'm so excited to be here. Amazing. Um, so to, just to kind of kick us off, I think Carlina had mentioned that you were the project manager at Art Production Fund. You have actually moved into the role of um, director of operations. And you know, in this very robust role, you've been with Art Production Fund for a number of years now. You certainly wield a lot of different responsibilities and wear a lot of hats. So I'm curious if maybe you can just walk the viewers through a, you know, what your day-to-day -day looks like and what some of your core responsibilities are. Totally, yeah. So I started at Art Production Fund in 2012 as project manager. Um, and then I was promoted to director of operations in 2016. Um, and since then, I mean, as sure, like, as you guys know, with a small team, you sort of kind of do everything, you know, there's so mm -hmm. many different roles. So, you know, I do everything from overseeing the financials, you know, we have like a nonprofit audit we do every year. So that's sort of like an unsexy thing that we have to do, <laughs> but it needs to get done. Um, I oversee APF's social media, you know, I sort of plan our content calendar. I help create content. Um, that's something that I oversee. And then, you know, when it comes to like actually our projects, you know, I act as the artist liaison between the artists and our different partners, which is really fulfilling. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's so many different roles. And, you know, as we look to the future and think about um, future projects, you know, myself and our executive director, Casey, we act as curators, we select artists for future projects, we suggest artists um, to our partners and our clients. Um, so there are many different roles, um, which make it, makes it really fun and really exciting. Um, and it's, you know, every day is very different. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think, you know, our production fund certainly has distinguished itself for having these really robust and very amazing hybrid projects, many of which are quite public in scope. And, and a lot of, you know, New Yorkers as well as West Coasters have had the opportunity to experience a lot of the projects that you guys have brought to fruition. Um, just to kind of recap for a few of the viewers in case people haven't kind of stayed abreast of what APF has done recently. Um, I actually recently had a conversation with Saya Wolfalk, who is one of the artists that you guys programmed in the Oculus, for instance, with a large scale LED mural. Um, you also worked with artists like Zoe Buckman to realize projects, you know, in collaboration with hospitality um, partners, something, you know, like the standard West Hollywood. So I imagine that a lot of your roles remain the same and that despite the challenges we faced last year, um, you know, much has remained rather consistent, but I'd also be curious to hear what might have changed or what needs have evolved and just how you guys have, have really kind of evolved as an organization in the past year. Yeah, I mean, we've been so lucky because, you know, most of our projects are outdoors. Um, or in very like large public areas. So people can experience them very safely. Um, so, you know, the majority of our programming we've been able to maintain throughout the pandemic, um, which I feel is really amazing that we're so lucky for that. Um, you know, certain things we had to shift, you know, in the very beginning of the pandemic, we shifted some of our programming digitally. Um, we did these great 
artist workshops for kids um, in the very beginning mm -hmm. of the pandemic, which was really wonderful. And it, um, you know, it was a way to engage artists and um, give them an opportunity while also giving people things to do at home. Um, but I have to say, you know, we've been able to maintain our public projects because people can go outside, they can wear a mask and experience them very safely. So in, in that sense, we've been very lucky. Well, I'm very, very glad to hear that people are still able to go out and about and see all of your work because it's always very dynamic and very, you know, awe-inspiring. Um, one of the things that I think we've been asking a lot of individuals just in the course of our Frank Friday's conversations is, you know, how has your work changed in, you know, you guys have worked remotely for a while, I anticipate. Um, just what does your remote work situation look like? And can you just tell us a little bit about how the team goes about their day to day? Sure. Yeah. So um, I've actually been based in Washington, D.C. since 2019. So before the pandemic. So I had been working remotely even before everything kind of shut down. So, you know, our team was very accustomed to remote work. Um, so we were able to adapt really easily and kind of adjust to the sort of new normal um, very quickly. You know, pre-pandemic, I was going back and forth to New York like fairly frequently. Um, sure. Since then, you know, not, there hasn't been as much in-person, um, you know, time with our team and, you know, with other people, um, but we've been able to really maintain these relationships and, and continue to work um, just because I think we were able to adapt so quickly and, um, you know, we're a small team of three. So we were able to adjust um, to working remotely really well. Um, and then, you know, just like everyone else, we're, you know, meeting artists on Zoom. You know, sure. I recently just did a studio visit with an artist in LA on Zoom and, you know, maybe pre-2020, we wouldn't have necessarily gotten that opportunity um, just because it wasn't really a normal practice. Um, sure. So there have definitely been pros. Um, but we're definitely looking forward to kind of getting back into the swing of things um, in person in 2021. Yeah. Have you seen that any of kind of the needs, um, either of the artists or of your strategic partners, have there been any kind of um, big changes in terms of the demands or how people like to work together or even just challenges you're confronting? Um, you know, in the beginning, I think, you know, it was difficult for artists um, to have all the resources that they needed, you know, sure. certain, um, you know, founders we were working with had to close um, temporarily. So there was a bit of a pause in the beginning. Um, and also, you know, as we kind of continued our installs, you know, making sure that the installations were, you know, within the COVID, safe COVID practices of course. Um, was something we had to adapt to. Um, you know, with like temperature checks and all these things. Um, but once we got into the swing of things, you know, I think we were kind of in a, in a groove. And I think, you know, we were able to make sure that the artists felt really comfortable um, continuing to work and um, especially, you know, installing and putting work out into the public. Obviously for us, the artists are our number one priority. We want them to feel supported. We want them to feel safe um, and we want to give them great opportunities so um, that was always front of mind um, and I think you know we were able to kind of create a system when it came to installing and presenting um, public projects that made everyone really comfortable and um, they were super successful. That's that's great to hear um, and we are hopefully emerging into a year it seems like things are returning to a relative sense of normalcy and hopefully um you know just the public health crisis will start to dissipate over the course of the next few few months um i'm curious you know has apf or even you as you know an arts professional identified a certain mission or a kind of mandate that's going to guide the 2021 season or year rather um that's a that's a really good question you know i I think for myself and Casey, our executive director, you know, one goal that we have is really to push our programming nationally. Um, yeah. You know, we want to make sure that the sites where we present work are super diverse, you know, um, whether it's like a super busy, highly trafficked area like Rockefeller Center um, to a more remote, remote location like a Marfa, Texas or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure that 
you know, all different types of communities um, have access to public art and, you know, incredible um, contemporary art projects. So, you know, that's definitely a goal of ours. You know, it would be super exciting to do a project in like Detroit or, you know, sure. I've been working a lot um, or meeting a lot of artists um, here in DC and in Baltimore, you know, it could be really fun to do something here. So I think um, expanding the programming nationally is definitely something um, we're thinking about in 2021. That's great. That's very exciting. We'll definitely have to stay tuned. Yeah. It'll be very, very cool to see. Um, I'm curious, maybe we can kind of pivot a little personally. I, it's still professional, but I'd love to hear just how you feel that you've been engaging with the arts community and staying connected personally over the past few months. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, we've been able to keep doing, you know, studio visits on Zoom, which has been amazing. Sure. Um, you know, I'm like, I'm really trying to manage my screen time, but, you know, I think <laughs> being able to connect with artists on Instagram and, you know, on social media has been such an incredible tool, um, especially since, you know, we're not necessar necessarily seeing these shows in person, sure. um, you know, that we can see the work um, on Instagram and, you know, connect with the artist that way. So that's been amazing. I mean, I think there are so many tools that allow us to stay connected and really stay aware of what's out there because that's always been since the beginning um, of my career, that's been the most important thing to me is just seeing as much art as possible um, and, you know, really connecting with artists. And, you know, while we can't do that as much in person, I think there are so many tools out there that allow us to do that um, virtually, which is really nice. Um, and then, you know, just seeing things locally sure. um, has been really great. Um, I went to I went to Glenstone for the first time Absolutely. Um, recently, which was so incredible. And you know, it's really close to where we live. And you know, pre-pandemic, I was traveling so much, I was so busy, I never really got to explore sort of um, you know, the DC area where I'm living. So to be able to go to Glenstone was really cool. So I think that sort of opens up opportunities to um, you know, explore more locally as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it is nice to hear that you're able to still engage with certain, you know, exhibitions at a safe distance and whatnot, but in person, um, you know, I also just being here in Miami and having, you know, a lot of access to Palm Beach, I think it's just really fun to kind of have a renewed, um, a renewed, you know, eyesight and curiosity for some of the places that otherwise were just kind of part of the local vernacular, but you didn't quite appreciate in the same way. So it's nice to hear totally. you're getting out and about. Yeah, I mean, there's so much like right in our backyards. And, um, you know, I was always kind of running around and, you know, I didn't appreciate it as much. And we're actually moving back to New York this summer. Um, oh, so I definitely, yeah, no, we're super excited. Um, but I definitely want to experience as much as I can here in the DC area because there is a lot to see. That's great. Um, Kathleen, when we last spoke with you through Art Frankly for your Frank Talk, um, you know, one of the questions that we posed was, you know, what is a best practice in professional life these days? And I think you mentioned, and rightfully so, as the project manager at the time at APF, um, project management and really pushing things through the pipeline and accountability. So I'm curious if beyond that level of diligence and the follow-up, are there any other best practices that you can think of that you, you know, would like to share with the viewers who may be interested in pursuing a career in the arts? Um, definitely. I mean, I think the follow-up is so important. You know, I, I mean, I try not to go crazy with the emails, but I do think that, you know, if someone sends me something, even if I don't have the answer at that moment, sure. I love to just, you know, let the them know that I've, the acknowledgement, exactly. Like I, I received your message. I'm working on it. I think that just makes everyone involved, like whether it's the artist or, our partners just feel really um, taken care of and, you know, sure. make them feel like, you know, we're on it. Um, so that's something, you know, with follow, follow up and follow through that I really, really practice. Um, and I think especially today, you know, when you're not seeing people in person as frequently, you know, just being able to like have that digital um, follow up and connection is really important. Um, so I try to always practice that and make sure that people know that, um, you know, I'm on it and I'm working on it, um, whatever the task may be. Um, yeah, and I think just like staying accountable and I, I think without 
that level of follow-up, you know, it's kind of hard to push the project along. Um, and as we know, there's like these projects are, you know, it, it takes a lot to get them off the ground. So, you know, just having that attention to detail and, you know, making every task feel just as important as, you know, a larger task is really something that, um, you know, enhances the project overall. Sure. Um, what is one thing that you do every day in either your personal or your professional life that you think is very meaningful for you? My gosh. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I mean, my favorite thing of what I do is connecting with the artist. You sure. Know, I love working with artists. You know, it's, it's really the most fulfilling thing for me. Um, so I think paying attention to like new and emerging artists is something that I get really excited about. Um, you know, whether it's an introduction from a friend or, you know, someone I discover on Instagram, you know, if carving out that time to, you know, so much of my job is, you know, a lot of like production and, you know, detail oriented work, but, you know, carving out the time to really discover new artists and get mm -hmm. excited about their work is, for me, just like the most fulfilling thing. And, you know, it gets me really excited about, um, you know, working at APF and um, the possibilities of getting to work with these artists in the future. So I always try to carve out a little time just to, um, you know, discover new artists and, and see what people are working on. I love it. Um, and then we always love to conclude these little soundbite interviews with a question about just really like one positive takeaway that you, um, you know, from the past year and all the challenges that we've confronted, is there, you know, one kind of nugget of wisdom that you can extrapolate from all of that? Um, you know, I think people are really getting creative. Um, I'm really excited to see, um, you know, the work that comes out of this past yeah. year. You know, there's so many shows those that are scheduled for 2021 and, you know, things that have been postponed. And I just, I, I'm so excited to see kind of what comes out of this. Um, I think, you know, the taking the time to slow down, you know, as much as it was frustrating and scary, I think, you know, there's definitely um, some silver lining to that. And I'm excited to see kind of what the artists and creators are, are, are working on and um, kind of how that translates you know, into the next year. So yeah. I'm excited about that. I think that is certainly something to be excited about. And it also is just a great kind of ending note for our, for our conversation today. So I think, you know, Kathleen, on my part, it's just been such a pleasure to chat with you. And yeah, thank you so much for taking the time today. My gosh, thank you so much. It's so great chatting with you. And thank you, Ellie. And thank you, Carlina.